The future of Destiny has been revealed. In fact, the next three years of Destiny have been revealed, sort of. In fall 2020, September 22nd, to be specific, Destiny's next expansion, called Beyond Light, will launch. In fall 2021, the expansion The Witch Queen will launch. And in fall 2022, the expansion Lightfall, working title, will launch, driving these experiences to, quote, a moment. Bungie gave us insight into this next era of Destiny very recently, so let's talk about what they told us. Let's start with some big gameplay and story-based news. The Exo Stranger is back, despite being ruled out as a possible character to return to the Destiny franchise a while back. To those unfamiliar, the Exo Stranger is some ambiguous character that did what felt like absolutely nothing during the original campaign of Destiny 1. We will have a new destination in Europa, the birthplace of the Exo, where we will face off against Aramis. The Witch Queen and Lightfall will also feature new destinations. We will have a new raid in the fall. We will have a new damage type for the first time since Destiny's original launch, and new subclass branches for that element called Stasis, where players will be able to wield the darkness itself. However, apparently these subclass trees won't be the same as the trees we have right now and may allow for a bit more flexibility in how they are utilized. One of the biggest revelations from this reveal is news on Destiny 3, in that there is no plan to make a Destiny 3. In order to make Destiny 3, Destiny 2 would have to, quote, go dark, unquote, for an undetermined amount of time. The current plan is to keep making expansions for Destiny 2. The next big revelation is that a lot of major destinations will be getting removed from the game and placed into the Destiny Content Vault, aka the DCV. I'll explain. The size of the game is getting to be a major problem for Bungie in terms of developing the game. The game takes longer to develop, more bugs are introduced, which leaves less time to make new stuff, and creating builds of the game to test can take days instead of hours. The game will be hitting around 115 gigs in September 2020 as well, which makes it very difficult for people with bad internet to download the game in a timely manner, or even updates to the game. A lot of that 115 gigs is content that isn't really relevant anymore either. For example, the Warmind expansion accounted for 0.3% of all time played in Season 10, while it takes up 5% of the entire game's file size. Therefore, Bungie will be cycling out some of the least commonly played things in the game and placing them into the DCV. This will give them the space that they need to bring these newer expansions and newer pieces of content to us without having to worry about maintaining outdated, barely played content. The DCV will also contain everything from Destiny 1, which has the potential to come to Destiny 2 at given intervals. Important to know that the DCV will not take away weapons or armor that you already own. It is more about destinations and activities, so your stuff is safe. For example, at some point in year 4 of Destiny 2, probably not in 2020, the Vault of Glass raid from Destiny 1 will make a comeback refreshed for the current era. The Cosmodrome will also make an appearance in Season 12 along with the Will of Crota Strike, which would go into the Strike playlist rotation. In Season 13, more of the Cosmodrome will be fleshed out into the game and two more Cosmodrome Strikes will be added. Content has the potential to get beefed up and revitalized for a future release. Bungie does not plan to bring the entirety of Destiny 1 into Destiny 2 all at once on a permanent basis, aka merging both games together. Here is what the director menu will look like come September 2020. You'll notice that Titan, Io, Mercury, Mars, and the Leviathan are all gone, and this includes the activities within strikes, campaign, etc. These will be moved to the DCV for the foreseeable future and then potentially brought back at later dates. Europa is the new destination coming with Beyond Light and the Cosmodrome is unvaulted for the launch of Beyond Light. 
Some other notes, there will be new ways to earn exotics that rotate out of the game. PvP maps will remain a curated best of mix of maps from D1 and D2. Gambit and Gambit Prime are being merged into one mode with their original armor visuals available to earn from the Drifter. There will be three raids playable in the fall, including the new one based in the Deep Stone Crypt of Europa. I'm assuming the other two are Last Wish and Garden of Salvation, which leaves Scourge of the Past as the only question mark, as Crown of Sorrow is based in the Leviathan, which is going away. Next is a quick note on next-gen console support. Destiny will be coming to the next-gen consoles. It will be playable at 60 FPS. It will be playable at 4K. You can upgrade your PS4 copy of the game to the PS5 version for free. Same with Xbox. You can cross-play within console families, so PS4 players can play with PS5. Same with Xbox and their console family. Cross-play across multiple platforms is still currently in the works, hopefully coming out in 2021, but no guarantee was made. Transmog will be making its way into the game, which will allow for much more customizability with our armor sets and looks, which is great. Bungie is also looking at enhancing things like the title grind with gilded titles and improvements to GM Nightfall loot, but those are more specific things, and I really wanted to focus on big picture stuff for this video. And I think that wraps up the major talking points. Which means it's time for thoughts. Well, you have my attention at the very least. New subclasses with a new damage type. Very interesting. Especially considering it's based on the ambiguous darkness that we've only been told about for six years now. Adding it as a new damage type is neat. First time we've had a new damage type since the start of the game. But I don't know how much specifically that will add to the game without more details. What I'm more interested in is seeing how these subclass trees will work, since apparently they will not be the same as the branches that we have right now, where everything is sort of locked in these chunks of four. Sort of got Destiny 1 customizable subclass vibes from that, but again, without more detail, it's pretty tough to comment beyond a general sense of, oh, that's neat, I wonder what that will be like. We have a new destination in Europa. A destination that has been teased by concept art since before the game even launched. I'm also very interested in seeing what goes down there. I'm only semi-interested in the Aramis plotline, though. Aramis's house is the fallen house that attempted to steal Outbreak Perfected from the tower a while back. She has led the House of Devil loyalists to Europa and started to utilize the darkness in an attempt to destroy the city, guardians, although the reason as to why is completely unknown. I assume we'll explore that going forward, and I assume it'll hopefully have something to do with the pyramid ships or Savathun or any of those things. This isn't really a storyline that I am personally invested in that much, so I'm hoping they're able to tie it together with some of the more current, ongoing stuff that's been happening. I'd really hate for this to feel like another one-off story while the main story or the more interesting story happens in the background of lore cards. However, the fact that Bungie has announced not just this, but the next two expansions after gives me some hope with regards to the full narrative of the game. That Bungie appears to have somewhat of an idea of how they plan to execute the story that we're hopefully not just going to be left with a bunch of loose ends as we push into the unknown. Next, next-gen console support. You'll love to see it. I'm glad Next Gen is getting Destiny to the frame rate that it deserves to be at. Inter console, family, crossplay is great. Upgrading for free is great. Hopefully, we can get that true crossplay added to the game next year. Uh, I don't think anyone has a problem with any of that stuff at all. No Destiny 3. Well, I made a video about this already, but you heard it from Luke. Destiny would have to go dark in order to get a full sequel developed. Stuff that they could probably just do in Destiny 2. This did not come as a surprise at all. I don't think we really need a Destiny 3. But let's get to the big news. The Destiny Content Vault. 
the removal of several destinations from the game, including their activities, which means stuff like strikes, Titan, Io, Mercury, Mars, Leviathan, all gone for an undetermined amount of time. The addition of some Destiny 1 content in year 4. Bungie's reasoning makes complete sense to me. People just aren't playing these destinations unless they have a hyper-specific reason to, maybe besides the campaign, with exception to the Leviathan, which is probably played a little bit more often. Of the total Leviathan suite of activities, I'm assuming the Menagerie gets played the most out of all the others available, but because it's in the family of the Leviathan, it will be going as well. Crown of Sorrow is the first time a raid will be pulled out of the game, no longer available for play, and it is speculated that Scourge of the Past will also be leaving, as neither of these raids are having their gear power caps raised in Season 12. This is an unfortunate side effect of the game's growth. I don't like seeing raids leave the game, but I haven't run Crown since Garden came out, and the only reason I've been running Scourge is to get my friends Anarchy, which will now be easier as time goes on during this season. I don't like seeing content leave, but if it can be replaced with things that I will actually do and the community will actually do, then I'm okay with not going back to Titan just to do some bounties or a strike in the strike playlist. Yeah, Titan's a pretty cool place. Cool visuals, but it hasn't been utilized that much since it came into existence back in 2017. Mercury, Mars, two destinations that exist because of two expansions back in the early days of Destiny 2, only being used when the Nightfall Strike is there for random exotic quests and occasional visits to Anna Bray. It's not worth keeping them around if they just unnecessarily clog up the game's space for very little value. Now, you might say that they were used for seasonal content, which is true, but they were used for one season, where the DCV would serve its purpose by bringing things back when they need to come back for whatever reason. Do other MMO-type games completely purge old content? Generally speaking, I don't think they do. Uh, WoW has had some stuff where things have changed but are still in the game. Final Fantasy XIV literally remade their entire game and it's much better now. I think a lot of people are going to push back using that knowledge. But I imagine Bungie's architecture for building Destiny is a bit different to how MMOs are built, where leaving that older content in isn't as big of a deal in those MMOs, not to mention new character starter zones and stuff like that. Destiny is a bit more flexible in that regard, and as long as the new player experience is smoothed out, then I, I think this is going to be fine. You could probably catch new players up with regards to the story with a couple of cutscenes as well. Although, if you wanted to just completely ignore the Red War, honestly, that'd probably be fine at this point because it's pretty self-contained. Curse of Osiris campaign, Warmind campaign, both self-contained as well. I liken this to when Bungie purged a bunch of powerful gear reward sites last year, purging stuff from super old content to make the grind a bit more straightforward. And it was nice to not have to worry about as many things on the map anymore. I imagine that this is what it'll feel like for Bungie to not have to worry about these old destinations taking up space and doing nothing at best. The sense of relief that they can actually work on the game again without being hampered by as many technical issues. I also heard some game engine talk in the reveal. I know that Destiny's engine has always had some news surrounding it about how it's getting upgraded or it's based on this and it's based on that. The community loves to talk about Destiny's engine. And even though I think something like talking about the game engine would go over a lot of people's heads, self-included, I think that if there is something significant happening to the game's engine, Bungie should make a post to educate us provided that they can put it into terms that we can actually understand. Ultimately, this doesn't even feel like it's up for debate either. It's gonna happen, and I'd be shocked if Bungie just turned around one day and threw everything back into the game unless significant improvements are made to their workflow and the game that they can be reintroduced as a whole. And ultimately, I am for whatever will end up making the game better, and that includes making it easier for Bungie to develop the game. 
less time spent on old stuff means more time spent on new stuff. And after season 10 and 11, I think people are looking for that super fresh content drop to happen. I don't really have any attachment to these destinations at all. Sure, I would miss them on occasion, but I would rather focus my energy on playing new activities and new content as opposed to going back every once in a while. As for Destiny 1 content coming back, it's neat. I personally would like to see activities come back more than I would destinations, but either way, it's neat. I've never been super gung-ho about bringing back Destiny 1 content because I've already played it and I can go play it whenever I want to. Would it be cool to play it on PC? Sure. But again, I would much rather play new stuff than old stuff and I've been of the mindset that bringing back a whole bunch of Destiny 1 stuff would take away time from making or implementing new stuff. I'm excited to play Vault of Glass in the current era. Absolutely. I'm just not as huge on the bring back everyone from Destiny 1 movement as others might be. But as long as bringing back old stuff does not take away from making new stuff, I'm fine with it. When it starts to take away, that's when it's a problem. I've also gotten questions about whether or not Lightfall will be the end of the Destiny franchise. Obviously, way too soon to tell. But with a name like Lightfall... Well, I can, I can see where you're going with that. Lightfall will mark the start of year six of Destiny 2, year nine total. Destiny was originally planned to be a 10-year franchise, so that does line up. It will be the end of the Era of Darkness, as it's been called. It's very possible that we enter a fourth and what I would assume to be final era, but I could see things ending here as well, depending on Bungie's plan. It's a toss-up right now without more detail. If this era goes well, and there's a story plan in place, I could see us pushing into double-digit years. But if not, then who really knows for certain? Anyway, those are my thoughts on the reveal of the next era of Destiny. I'm not full hype train. I don't have a first-class ticket. Just yet, you know, I'm, I'm in economy class right now. I will yet again be going into a fall expansion with a cautious optimism. But Bungie has typically done their best work when their backs have been against the wall. They know how to hype. They know how to make trailers. We know this. We just need to see what they end up delivering in the fall. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.